Well, here we are. We're going to start with putting some water on our, just a little bit of water on the top of our paper. I want this paint to run down. I'm working on Arches 140 pound rough paper. And I work on an easel at a fairly steep um, angle. As you can see, it's probably a little more than 45 degrees, I guess. I've got a little bit of cobalt and some ultramarine. And I'm just going to start out here. We're going to do an instant landscape. And by an instant landscape, what I'm doing is I'm getting my students to learn how to manipulate the paint, figure out what it does when it's really wet, what is it does, what it does when it's not so wet. Um, watercolor is basically all about how wet is your paper and how dry is your paper. How wet is your brush? How much paint do you have in your brush? And when we're trying to get a smooth wash, we want to have this bead of water going down the page. That's what keeps that from making a line. And I'm just going to grab that bead and pull it down. See how it just pulls right down. So we're thinking about sky. Now we're wondering, now maybe, maybe I might like to have some clouds in here. What do you think, some clouds? Now this is a different technique. We're gonna take and try to get a little bit of dry brush across the tops of these clouds. So I'm gonna go into that bead of water with a brush that's got mostly paint on it, not a lot of water, so I can get this dry brush effect on the tops of my clouds. Now I've gotten into a little trouble here. I've got some different color blues going. I was mixing my blues. I should have made a big puddle, but I'm going to see if I can straighten this out. It's still very wet up there, so this is fair, a fairly safe thing to be doing. Now I'm going to put some bottoms on these clouds. I want that to be nice and soft.
don't want this little don't want this hard edge here this hard edge along here that's blue so i'm taking a damp brush and just stroking it out and there's a little bit of a crawl back there where it was really wet i'm going to try to get that out now I'm going to try to soften this edge below the now below these clouds is going to be sky again. Now we're going to get the bead in there again. You don't, if you lose your bead, hold your brush upright and you'll get it right back again. The water comes out of the brush faster when you're holding it upright. See how the water just drips right out of the brush? And that's going to keep that edge nice and wet. I'm going to try to bring the bottoms of these clouds along here. I think maybe we're going to have a storm. I'm pretty sure we're going to have a storm. These are storm clouds. It's going to rain right in here. It's going to rain. Give me a little bit of rain over here. This is how you learn, you know, when you can go in and when you can't. Now I'm going to, while that's wet, while that's wet right in there, I'm going to wet it and then I'm going to dry it again with my brush and then I'm going to put some trees a tree line back there so I think I'll go into my favorite green which is called shadow green Now, right where that rain is, it might not be real distinct. It may be over in here, we might. See some indication of some trees. Put another row of trees in there, maybe. Now this, can you see how the wet into wet reacted? 
because the water was pushing the paint around. Now we're going to go in here and just pretend like, well, we don't know exactly what we're going to do here. We've got maybe there's some grass back there in the field and it's catching a little bit of sunlight. I'm going to pick some of that up because what I want is I want that to have a reaction with the wet paint there and that's what it's doing it's having a reaction you can also do oddball things like sometimes if you just take plain water and run it across you'll get something that reminds you of possibly ground fog And when you do this, you want to have maybe not quite so much tilt on your board so that it will react and push the paint away. And this is another reason I do these instant landscapes is so you can learn what what does the paint do when it's wet into wet or when it's dry into wet? Now those are all very interesting marks. Now you don't want to leave this edge in here um, hard. You want to soften that edge because I don't want to have to come back to that and try to figure out what am I going to do with it because I I've left it there and it got hard. Okay, now I think maybe I'm going to take and soften this out a whole lot. Well, that's really nice. I like what's happening in here. This is really kind of interesting. Let's put, um, let's put a field of flowers along here. Let's say we've got some really pretty little flowers way back up here in the distance somewhere. And they're not going to look distinct. You're not going to see every little blossom. And that's one thing that's kind of fun to do is to make something that gives you the illusion of flowers. Let's have some little purple flowers in here. Maybe a few back up in there. Now, Remember, you don't want this edge to get dry. I'm going to rinse my brush out and wet that edge so that I can sit here for a little while and I can think about, you know, what do I want to do there? Maybe I'll have a little stream come through here which means I need to have some blue sky. Reflecting into what is going to be wet water. And you never want to go back up in here. What happens if you go back up into any of this that's damp? this sort of thing will happen or worse because you have water on your brush as well as paint. The only way you can go back up into these wet areas is with really, really thick paint and you can get um, something. Now this is, I've got some shadow green on the end of my brush here and it's fairly thick. 
I'm going to put a couple of little bushes here. Now see, that's going to stay there because it's thick paint. onto damp paper and I'm going to get a little bit of a, a um, softness. This is kind of hard edge. That was fairly dry in there. Here it's, it's wet, it's damp and I'm getting soft edges. We're just sort of trying to figure out what we're going to do with this instant landscape. Now I've got my brush clean and dry and I'm going to come in here uh, clean and wet and I'm going to put some softness in there because that was a little bit dry in there. Now it's more of what I wanted. I want that to be soft. Whoops. See, I had way too much water on my brush. But that's kind of interesting. I kind of like that. Well, it's just a bigger bush. It's a bigger bush. That's okay. Now I want to do the same thing over here. Dry my brush out. Dry your brush off so that it's just damp. Now see how that softened that edge up? And I'm going to soften it a little bit on the top. Can you see that? Maybe. Maybe I'll have a little stream come along like this. It's going to be kind of like the blue sky above. Now I want some greenery in here. Dry brush again. Here I go, getting my head in there again.
dry some of this up. Now let's put a few more flowers in there. Now I've got some crawl bags happening here. I'm just going to press the heel of my brush down into that, make it go away. Now I think what might be kind of nice is a little bit of splatter. Now there's a lot of splatter here that I don't want, and if I just pick it up with my towel, it goes right away. And I'm gonna soften some edges up here while it's still wet. That's kind of a square looking piece right there. I don't think flowers look particularly square. All right, we're going to make some reflections here. Just can't seem to keep my head out of there.
Now, in order to make that water look like it's wet, we need to have a streak across here. And you dry, dry your brush off, and we're just going to pick up some of that paint. Okay, now we're going to have to put a little bit of a shadow along the edge of the water here, edge of the ground. And you don't want to make a, a solid line. I always say make a bunch of little dot dashes. Little dot dashes is all you need. Oops, that's really wet. There. Now see, we've got this blossom here, but I don't mind that at all. Okay, now we're gonna have to put some land or something down in here. We need to make this look more like flowers. That's kind of dry. We're gonna wet that. Put a few more flowers in there. Dry your brush off a little bit. So it's mostly just it's mostly toothpaste consistency paint. That's a little more flower like. Dry your brush off, take the water out of your brush. Maybe over in here, this might be kind of a, a pinkish flower, fairly light. Get it a little bit dry. Yeah, we don't want to look over there too much. You don't want much detail over there. We're going to go back into the shadow green and we're going to make some foliage bushes coming up over this. Water area.
Let's have some green stuff in here too. Some nice green stuff. This is all kinds of stuff along the bank here. Okay, there we go, is a little instant landscape. And I need a little bit of, a little bit of an edge to that bank over there. And remember the dot dash business. It's just enough, just enough to let me know that that's where the water ends. There you go. We did this smooth sky up here first, and then we put streaks in it. And then we did this hard, dry edge along here for the tops of the clouds. And then we put water on the clouds and put the color in. And then we put the blue down here for the sky behind the clouds. And then we came in with some neutral tint and blue and came along in here and put this in while it was wet. And then you leave it alone and it does all of this stuff in here all by itself. And then I put the line of trees in, wet into wet. And then the line of this yellowy green grasses and stuff in the field here. And while that was wet, I drug water across here. And then you leave it alone and you do it at a less angle. And then I started bringing these flowers in, wet into wet. And then I put the water in, and then the foreground. Uh, one other thing that you can do, and we haven't done yet, is you can scratch into surfaces that are wet, but it's all too dry. We'll do that another time. I'm wondering if we might need something tall but I'm going to let it go just the way it is. This was a practice video for learning about wet into wet, creating ground fog, clouds with rain, flowers that just sort of look like flowers, but not really. They're just a suggestion of flowers. One other thing that I could do and I will do right now is I will come in here with some blue and put just a little bit of shadow underneath this streak. Whoops. 
See, you can take it right out. I don't always put this shadow underneath the water like that, but somehow it just seemed like it needed it. And there's a little hard edge there that doesn't look right. And the thing I do to that is I get my scrubbing brush and I stroke it. and make it disappear so that it's not a hard edge anymore. You can do it with a brush or you can do it with one of these stiff fabric brushes. Okay, that's not a straight edge there anymore. I didn't care for that that much. Okay. Thank you very much for watching. And I will see you next time. If this gets to be on YouTube, please hit the like button. Every little bit counts.